Good morning subscribers, G Economics here and today I'm going to continue the series with regard to market failure and you'll note I'm sure in my previous four videos where we have considered positive externalities and negative externalities and now we're going to have a look at the policies which the government can use in order to correct these market failures. Those of you who are familiar with the work of John Maynard Keynes you will also be familiar with that well-known quote, in the long run, we're all dead. Now what did JMK mean by that? What he meant was that if the government didn't intervene in order to correct the market failures, then that particular market failure would not self-correct and it would simply persist. Contrary, of course, to the arguments put forward by so-called classical economists. So today we're going to look at the negative production externality. I'm not going to go through this all again, I've done a video on that, um, the, the whys and wherefores of negative externalities. Have a look at that one if you haven't seen it and then watch this video. So now we're going to look at the possibility of curing a negative externality such as this by introducing what we refer to as an environmental tax. So what we're going to do here is we're going to tax the firm a sum which is equivalent to the damage which they are causing to society, thereby reducing the level of output from Q1 to Q star. And as you know, Q star is then the socially optimum level, or as we economists like to call it, the allocatively efficient level. So we're using this whole notion of an environmental tax. Now, this work was really pioneered by the uh, work of Pijou, a French economist, and so sometimes you will see that this is referred to as a Pigovian tax. And regardless of the name of it, what we're trying to do here is trying to internalize the externality. In other words, get the firm, the polluting firm, no, naughty, naughty, get that polluting firm to pay for the damage which it is imposing upon society. And so that is another very useful phrase to be using here, ladies and gentlemen. We are internalizing the externality. And so what we want to do is we want to reduce output from Q1 to Q star by way of tax. Now how much will that tax be? Well, in this instance, the size of the tax, as you know, is the vertical distance between the two curves, MSC and MPC. Because as you know, MSC equals MPC plus the MEC, and the EC is of course the external cost, the cost being imposed upon society. So if you can charge firms a tax which is equivalent to the damage that they're doing to society, as shown by the distance between the two curves, then theoretically you can raise firms costs which will then cause the firm to reduce its output and of course the price will rise. And that ladies and gentlemen would bring us to a socially optimum position where the marginal social costs are equivalent to the marginal social benefits at point B. Now, what are a few problems of using a tax like this? And I'm sure you're thinking along these lines already. If you get a question in the exam about this, not only will you be asked to describe this diagram, but of course it's more than likely that it will be an evaluate question. So what are some of the problems here? And I've listed just four for you to think about. First of all, the size of the tax. It is very, very difficult for the government for anybody really, to very accurately assess the size of the external costs. How do you really measure accurately the external cost being imposed upon society from a polluting firm? Very, very difficult. Therefore, to put a numerical value on that BC is also very difficult. And actually what might happen is the government might overestimate indeed the damage being imposed upon society. If that happened, MSC, in worst case scenario, might end up up here, where you've got a level of output Q2. Now, that would make the situation even worse because you're not getting enough output being produced, 
And that, ladies and gentlemen, would result in market failure becoming government failure because the government intervenes in the market and actually, because they don't get it quite right, they make the situation uh, worse because we're moving from Q1 way beyond Q start Q2. So you need to think about that. Also think, of course, well, if they underestimated it, then MSC might end up here and there would be enough of a reduction in output. So that's something to consider. Market failure becoming government failure. The government getting its calculations wrong and not introducing the correct level of taxation. Secondly, think about price elasticity of demand. Here I've got, a, you know, this is neither very elastic nor very inelastic, but what if the elasticity of demand, and remember the social benefit curve is also the demand curve here, what if that was very, very inelastic? So let me just dash on a very, very inelastic curve here, like so. Now if we wanted to reduce the output level down to Q star along this very inelastic curve, I'll just take this, keep this going up until we hit that brown line, price, ladies and gentlemen, would have to be up here. So the size of the tax would be enormous. So again, that's something to consider. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, whether you try and tax the supplier or tax the consumer, actually it's always the consumer who ends up paying most of these things. So let, let's just remember that. I'll, I'll come back to that and give you a little illustration of that later. But regardless of who you try to tax, usually it's the consumer who always ends up paying. Thirdly, as I've already mentioned really, assessing the accurate value of the negative externalities, that's very difficult to assess. So again, that, that's a weakness with introducing such a policy. And then finally, those of you who've read Joseph Stiglitz's book, Professor Joseph Stiglitz's book called Making Globalization Work, you will know that he talks in that book about the so-called race to the bottom. Now the race to the bottom means that multinational companies particularly, they look for places to locate their businesses where the regulations are very, very lax and consequently their costs will be very cheap and their profits very high. And so if you start taxing, if government, your government starts taxing these companies exorbitant amounts of tax, then what will happen is that the firm will simply move up sticks and relocate to somewhere else where the laws, the regulations, the stipulations are much lower and they can maximise their own profits for their own self-interest and for the benefit of their shareholders. Which of course is generally speaking what businesses want to do and are tasked to do anyway. But that would mean of course that you would get very footloose companies moving they, they would see a tax like this and they would say, whoa, sweet child of mine, we're moving elsewhere. So there's four evaluative comments for you, ladies and gentlemen, with regard to um, a Pugovian tax, which will reduce a negative externality. Okay, ladies and gents, that's it for today. I'm going to leave it at that. Bye for now.